Intelligence lets you cast giant spells that do bananas amounts of damage, but leveling it up without leveling your mind gives you a tiny pool of magic with which to cast. And leveling it up without leveling your vigor means you're gonna die. And leveling it without dexterity means your spells are slow, so you're gonna take a hit. Basically, casting spells requires a lot more than just the stat you're required to have to cast. So let's try it anyway. To watch these runs live, follow me on Twitch. We find new ways to play Elden Ring all the time. And hey, maybe we'll have chat be Bloodborne soon or something. You could help with that. Make sure you're subscribed. It's the most intelligent way to make sure you don't miss a video. And if you want a more intelligent way to browse the internet while gaming, I've got good news. This video is sponsored by Opera GX. Opera GX is a browser experience designed for us, the gamers. As gamers, we love creating custom characters, but why aren't we customizing our browsers? Well, because you don't have a browser that gives you those options until you get Opera GX. I've modded mine out for a medieval vibe because it's very Elden Ring. You can customize so much different stuff. That background music you've been hearing? Yeah, that's part of the browser. This is your sidebar where you can turn on and off anything you want to customize your browsing experience. Everything about this browser is customized. The yellow trim, custom. This fire-breathing dragon, custom. The fun sounds we go, oh, 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 oh. Yeah, all custom. It's amazing. Opera even has sounds for when you open a new tab, close a tab, or type in an address. But hey, maybe Medieval doesn't do it for you. Don't worry, there's plenty of other options at the GX store. We got Lo-Fi Chill, Anime, GX Boy, Cyber Deck. Even if you're not into all the bells and whistles, which you should be, because they're fantastic, Opera GX is still the best browser for a gamer because you can control the amount of RAM it's using. If you want to give Opera a try, but you're worried that you're not going to have all your login information, Opera makes it super easy to transfer all of your information from one browser into another browser. It's a few simple clicks. It's very easy. It's very painless. Click the link in the description to download Opera today. Now, let's get back to that big brain run. We'll kick things off as a wretch named Young Sheldon. With all this intelligence, we'll be hitting the bosses with a big bang theory of magical explosions. Bazinga into Limgrave, get a crafting kit, a horse, and slowly get the jellyfish for later. The whole time we're talking to Rodrika, a wolf is just waiting outside. What a good boy, not attacking me. Leave the dog alone, we're not doing anything with the dog. We probably won't summon Aurelia for any point, but having her for later could get us a useful talisman. On the way to the Dragon Barrel, we grab the Strength Physic tier in case we decide we need to use a weapon later. I might be a little tempted, especially considering we can't upgrade our mind at all. It might be nice to have a backup. If that weapon has a weapon art, we'll be glad we saved Alexander. If it doesn't, I'll still be glad I saved Alexander. Doing the right thing doesn't require a payment. To use that strength tier, we need a Physic Flask from the Third Church of America, but the first Physic tier is bad, so we'll go get better Physic tiers, like the Stamina Boosting tier and the Charge Attack tier for a caster. Those might not actually be better. Now let's get those first big brain moves going. Warp to the dragon barrel that's a big brain move stealing runes from a bunch of graves that's a big brain move we're allowed to steal the runes because the bodies ain't got no souls in them picking up a somber stone nine and eight for later yeah that's a big brain move we're gonna be spending plenty of time getting beaten down by bosses so we don't need to waste time hunting down upgrade materials those grave runes could get us the spiked cestus for a beast torch because i saw a video where they use the beast torch so it will automatically work better it's so good you should use it because i saw another youtube man use it then we'll grab our pickle and go to town on the dragon toes hmm what stat should i invest in intelligence don't mind if i do Fort Pharaoh is right nearby, so let's hop in for the first half of the Dectus Medallion and Radigan Sword Seal. Maybe we'll need 5 Strength and Dexterity later, I don't know, I write these videos at the exact same time I'm running the game. That's why we got killed by the bats on the way out. I was typing this sentence, hey, why doesn't the Beast Torch work on bats? Bats are beasts. There's some more stuff we need in the Dragon Barrow, but first, a detour into Limgrave for the second pickle just hanging out and the Carrion Scroll. It's gonna give us a spell with the best ratio of damage to magic cost later in the game. For now, we need spells like the one from Lenny's house. I don't know who Lenny is, but his front door is locked, so we have to jump up to the top window to break in. It's right next to the Knight's Cavalry, who has a nasty habit of falling off the bridge and dying. Can't relate. I would never die. Are you sure? If you've ever wondered what the Red Main Knights guard in their chests, egg. It's egg. 
Did you know you can use egg with other items to craft focus boosting items? Why is egg in chest? Why protect egg? The meteorite staff is just lying around next to some flowers that kill us. It can't be leveled up, but it already has S scaling for intelligence. It also boosts the damage of gravity spells like the rock sling. I think I may have accidentally dunked on this spell when I meant to say bestial sling. To be fair, both of the spells sling rocks. If bestial sling slung small animals like a shotgun of squirrels, I'd like it a lot better. And I'd do a squirrel girl run. Now we get to do learnia errands. You might think that a prodigy doesn't have to do a lot of prep, but it turns out getting good grades earlier in life requires a lot of studying and an average family income of $150,000 per year. These two fingers in a hole might help us out while we're getting some brain going. They might come in later. It's weird to go into the carrion study all the normal way, but there are benefits. There's one benefit. It's the carrion glintstone staff, which boosts the damage of carrion sword magic by 15%, including spells like the carrion slicer, my beloved. From my beloved, the turtle pope. Hey, we used it in the Obi-Wan run. We used it in the magic damage only run, but like, I'm not gonna not use it. It's good. I hate spells, but even I gotta admit, this little blender is pretty fun. It's also basically a weapon. I would love to test it against the Erdtree avatar, but these dang minotaurs have the accuracy of a pro gamer. It wouldn't be as frustrating if they just grappled up to a wall and did a 720 spin before absolutely doming me. After a double kill, we finally get through and can make our way up the hill to take on the Erdtree avatar. If you're looking to hit this guy, run past him a little bit to stop the mini minotaur army from joining the brawl. Carrion Slicer's already doing fantastic damage. Y'all see why? I'm using this sucker. If the boss is slow, it doesn't really even matter that we don't have vigor. This is a fully usable spell. Follow with a few rocks after we have to boogie away from Elden Stars Jr., then we get a delicious 20% boosting magic physic tier. Time to make some real progress. I was tempted to bring in Rajir for Margit to help, but it would just give him more HP. Besides, even with only 10 vigor, we should be able to take a hit or two. The first slicer does like 10% of his max health, and a rock sling hits pretty hard too, as long as all the rocks hit. But when he lands after the big jump three slicers put them below 50 percent hp amazing got a little too greedy after the hammer phase transition attack and he hits us with his own laser sword maybe low vigor really will be a problem it's just one more rock sling and that'll give us the win One more slice. Sounds like me at a pizza buffet. Hey, Gostock, if you open the gate, I promise I won't kill you. Thanks, man. I really appreciate that. Oh, by the way. Bazinga. Danger Path isn't super fun without health, but after the ballistas, it's fine. The birds obviously want to take a bite, and we don't have any healing left, but hey, we live in. Heading into Godric, I wonder how good the rocks will be at sniping him from the stairs. Pretty good. It works better when we've got the high ground, but he starts firing back with some wind, and that's not great. As he rolls behind the graves, I was a bit worried the meteors wouldn't hit, but hey, what if we wanted to curve those rocks? Pretty sure they buffed the tracking on these. I don't remember them being this good when I previously used them. Also, remember wanted? It's like a if Harry Potter started a fight club because he was an incel. Anyway, phase two, we just run up and slice him while he does the dragon fire, but it's just not enough, so it takes one more opening. I wish we had more intelligence. Let's go to school. Learnia time, and we land the jump safely. I feel like I'm getting better at this one. That's nice. Haven't fought Smurag in a while, but we have some heavy rocks that are good at flying, so we throw them at their face. Super effective! Poor little dragon stance breaks before it even fully stands up. The tracking on these rocks is really great after the diving breath attack. I hope this keeps working well later. Now there's no dragon on top of the keys to Raya Lucaria, so let's go do this thing. Imagine going to a magic school whose headmaster can't hold off two armies at the same time, beats so much ass that one of the generals of those armies marries her, and then raises an Empyrean, a god snake, and star scourge goddamn Radon. Renala is such a girl boss and regularly says trans rights. She also employs marionette soldiers who kick our ass. Hey, maybe we should get some marionette soldiers. They're on the way to the Red Wolf of Radagon anyway. By the way, that dog... Talk about it. Oh, mama. That dog has that dog in him, you know? So the Red Wolf of Radagon is a glass cannon that jumps and dashes around without stopping. On the third go, we actually get a bit of progress. The Rock Sling does good damage, but the tracking isn't good enough to keep up with this pouncing pupper. It causes some problems. So does dying. We even lost the Smarag runes because I kept forgetting to level up. Glad we did that extra fight. I mean, it was fun, but there is a better solution, and I really should have thought of it earlier, considering we picked it up like five seconds ago. Just a little 
side quest back to the round table hold to buy the spirit calling bell and now we can bring in the marionettes haven't leveled them up so they're pretty frail but they shoot really fast it's enough of a chew toy to distract the red wolf and let us throw rocks at him to get him hit sometimes it's a mixed bag sometimes we get three hits sometimes we get no hits eventually we throw enough rocks at this dog to get the win it might sound mean but that's because it is mean we threw rocks at a dog but we're rewarded for our minor animal cruelty with a memory stone for another spell and up top our first usable talisman the radigan icon that'll give us faster casting definitely very important because we can't invest in dexterity it's the only way to make our spells come out faster moongrim needs a hobby this is the most annoying npc in the game i swear he runs faster than any of the others he has a parry which is miserable to fight against and just like leave me alone i just want to fight Renala. we make it but moongrim is still alive hopefully we win so we don't have to deal with him again in order to save as much magic as we can for phase two we're bonking the kids with the staff worth noting this isn't as good as a weapon attack it's slower it doesn't track as well and overall just kind of stinks but it still counts as a hit and doesn't require any magic that means we have enough to throw rocks at Renala while she's on the ground but like how are the meteors worse at hitting a woman laying down on the ground than they are at hitting a dragon what the hell it's a two cycle in phase one with the rocks definitely doable i brought out the marionettes for phase two they pretty much immediately get blown away by the moon mommy that's a big waste of magic then we have to run away from the dragon and a bloodhound knight and uh-oh we're out of magic i guess we'll just use the spiked cestus and hope that the bleed is enough the bleed is fine but it's not enough we take enough hits to die and that means we have to deal with moon room again well balls some people like the shortcut where you go to the left of the grace and avoid the seven to ten Burger King snipers. I prefer the stairs where you just have to roll under one ball one time. That time I just wasn't paying attention. I tried to turn the balls against Moongrim, but it doesn't work. Then the elevator is at the top floor, so we have to ring around the rosy to avoid Moongrim and oh cool, he gets on the elevator with us. That's so fun. Finally he falls off and we ride the elevator up again. Ranala time. I thought saving magic by using spiked cestus in phase one would be a good idea, but it sucks. It takes two cycles and the kids are all over the place. Oh, wait, wait, wait. It takes three cycles and now we have no healing flasks because there's so much chip damage. If we're not at full health, we can't live a chandelier drop or a kitty cannon. Oh, I'm sorry, it's four cycles. And then I kind of gave up by the time we get to phase two. We do get a bleed proc and a stance break and then remember to use the magic we're saving and die. Oof. It's a bit of a shorter stream, but we'll get this on the next one some quick ones big problem that recurs through these the meteors whiff she isn't moving she is inert how are you missing her bonk the kids throw the rocks and die in phase two next two times we get hit with the chandeliers they're just like falling and i'll be honest it's hard to see a chandelier coming down see a chan like the song it's a song by sia this one goes a little better. First, we're bonking kids with the Cestus. It's faster. Once we get the drop, the meteors do their best. Oh my god. Phase two, we're sending so many rocks in, but she's sending lasers, staves, staves, Comet Azur, and Darwill. Oh god. Doing it without being able to take hits really does make it feel like a bit of a bullet hell. But Ryu Lucaria is done. We have our degree in hand. Let's take on the next big challenge. The next big challenge is going to be a ways away. It's time to kind of steamroll through the game. The streams are swollen. Two shard bearers in the ground means we can get a second pocket. Even more importantly, we grab the Moon Mother Staff, which boosts full moon sorceries. There are two. One of them also requires the Moon Mother Soul we had to spend to get the staff. So why get the staff? Well, it has the best casting modifier other than the loose stat staff. But since the loose stat staff makes your spells cost twice as much magic and we have less than 100 total magic to spend before we have to chug big jugs, Moon Mother's the one we're going to be going for. There's actually a little bit more we need in Raya Lucaria, but to get it, we have to go through the Raya Lucaria tunnel this place is so full of burger kings and it gets pretty hard to get around when you can't take a hit or rather a hundred hits from a hundred dudes in a hundredth of a second they took our lives twice and kind of a third time too but the death was actually to the crystallians resulting from a lack of red juice they're not really a hard boss by any means but there's two of them and with our widow scholar health bar we can't handle it to be fair this is how most of you casters play already i've seen your pvp videos and those health bars make me nauseous second try throwing rocks at rocks rocks they're rocks until they turn into smaller rocks. Now we can go back to Raya Lucaria and get the Terra Magica spell, a little mat that boosts magic damage by 35%, as long as you don't move. Imagine Bazinga in Fort Height. There we get the Dectus Medallion and beat the Fort Knight so we can ride up to the Altus Plateau and get another useful talisman. We have to fight Gilka. Have mercy. <laughs> 
Good God, the blender does so much damage. And the ritual sword talisman will just make it do even more damage. It's a 10% damage boost at full health, but stacking with the 20% from the magic tier, 15% from the carrion staff, it's more like a 13% boost. Woohoo. Sans the funny skeleton catches us in the air, making our body teleport up a bit for some reason. Dude does not care about space and time. We get Comet Azur from Primeval Sorcerer uh, Lustat? I think uh, Lucy. Yeah, Lustat. Maggie is right next to him and we can throw some rocks at her first, then dash in and blend her up like we blended her sister. That's an extra memory stone. Talk about upgrading our RAM. Up the ladders, what a thrill. There's a Starlight Shard we can use one of two ways later. Honestly, not sure if I'll use them at this point, but I do know we died to marionettes again. The Moon Mother staff needs some somber stones, so we hack up a finger creeper for a somber stone four. It's a bit of a mini boss, kind of like the wall masters in Zelda. Wow, do you think Miyazaki like Zelda? We're here for the ulcerated tree spirit, or more accurately, the physic tier it's holding. We tried sniping rocks from the horseback, but for some reason the horse is slower to dodge than we are. Or the tree spirit's better at tracking you when you're on a horse to compensate for the fact that you're on a horse? I don't know. It's just so weird how many places in the game let you be on a horse, but actually just say die, and also how many times should be able to be on a horse and the game just says no. Second try we back up throw rocks and it works. Break the stance fast so we can throw more rocks and just repeat till it's dead. This is... this is... this is... what? This is... Boring. EG sells us a few stones for the staff, but the better ones are in Volcano Manor. Rise with us against the Earth. Yeah, 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 yada, 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 whatever you want, lady. I'm just here for the rocks. The Somber Stone 6 is right by the noble entrance, and hey, maybe we'll try it. I got killed before cranking the shortcut. Oh, wait, never mind. Cutscene's playing. I guess we lived, or, uh, no, we didn't. There's a Somber Stone 7 past the noble, but I don't remember whether or not you can just azure this sucker. After some testing, you cannot. It will poise through and hit you with a black flame, or just run up to your face and murder you. Don't want to fight it straight up, and I think we're doing enough damage for now. There's an easy Somber Stone 7 once we get to the mountaintops. To prove our damage is fine, look at the Tree Sentinel fight. No, really look at it. Enjoy it. I hate this dude. It's a mandatory boss fight without a cutscene. Big pet peeve for me. You technically don't have to fight Margit, Godric, Renala, or Radon, but you have to fight this dude, and he's just like, like, here? Because, I don't know, like, he doesn't want you to go in there? Bummer. In the Royal Capital, we can also Omega Laser the Erdtree Avatar for a Lord's Rune and 50,000 runes. It's a high intelligence move that will also raise our intelligence. Ritual Shield Talisman, my beloved, boosting our defenses by 30% when we're at full health so we can finally start living through hits again. We can live through one hit again. So, uh, about what we had before hitting the capital, matching the damage of the enemies. Neat, I guess. Check it out against the Godfrey Shade. It works great. <laughs> We'll try again with the patented wizard playstyle. Throw rocks, back up, repeat. It's effective, but it's boring. It's at least funny to throw rocks at a black knife assassin from the bed. Black knife assassins are so worthless, I would never use one for assistance. More got next, we try to do with rocks, but he's a little too aggressive. Okay, we have three whole strategies for this build, so let's try strategy two, the Omega Laser. He has a counter to that strategy, walking slightly to the left. Damn, I guess we'll fire again as he goes for the swords and push him into phase two. Don't cough. Throw some rocks and now there isn't a Morgot anymore. Much better way to do the fight, even if it wasn't totally clean. Hey, we can finally get a Somber Stone 7 from the Mountaintops of the Giants. But remember when I mentioned there are places you should ride your horse but can't? Well, we get killed by a guy on a horse in a place that we can't be on a horse. That sucks. We have to ring around the rosy some misbegotten to get back on the elevator. Then I tried some nuclear revenge and it didn't, it didn't work. Uh, so, so run, just run. Into the Forbidden Lands. Say, if you wanted to make the most advancements in medicine, climate protection, and energy efficiency, wouldn't it be best to supply everyone with a higher education who wants it? Anyway, we're in the mountaintops of the Giants, and that's a somber stone seven. Now our Moon Mommy staff is at plus nine, and it's gonna be pretty freaking great. Check it out against the Fire Giant. Big Achilles energy here. Not in the Pride Month way. Happy Pride Month, though. In the Oh God, You're Slashing My Ankle to Pieces way. We're saving the Physic class for Phase 2, so just keep running around and slice, 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 baby. But in Phase 2, we fumble on the sticks and the laser doesn't come out as fast as I'd like it to. So we get bonked and have to come back later. Or do we? And, uh, it's a tie. Ty goes to the runner. We're running. Time to burn down an nerd tree. I'm sure there will be no negative consequences for that later. And just gotta run to the Godskin duo. We get killed by some beastmen, then get killed picking up some beastmen to use against the Godskins. But more importantly, Bernie is back. God, I missed you, my friend. Let's never be apart again.
With the infinite magic tier, we can summon the beast men as well, and three distractions for two enemies works pretty great. We spam some rocks against the chunky mostly, it breaks his stance since Bernie is bashing him with a giant hammer at the same time. He comes for us in phase two, but we go in on him after he whiffs with a black flame ball, so we can get some quick slicers in. Worth noting, the slicer would be doing way more DPS than the rocks, but it's way more risky if you don't have the wiggle room. Skinny hits us with a fireball, but we apparently have enough HP to live it. Wild, even with the DOT. I guess it's percentage based so it probably does less damage to us than any other build we've made throw a few rocks as it tries to summon then a chunky and hey hey bernie are you feeling or i guess you're feeling kind of kind of peaceful huh you want to get in there yeah that's better i could let bernie finish off the last skinny but we have this starlight shard that is fully useless now so let's just eat that and throw rocks as we slowly recover our magic yeah we might have messed something else up Swag jump success, but using rocks to snipe the bird for the bird run isn't as effective as you'd think. It's kind of a pain in the butt. After we die, we just, uh, run. Works fine. We even pick up a Somberstone 10 for our trouble that I'll forget about for a long time. Whoops. The staff is still strong enough to kill the Draconic Free Sentinel with the Omega Laser, though. Omega Laser also lets us skip phase one of Malekith. Very funny. Maybe you should stop talking and start fighting. I'm gonna try and use the Slicer. If you stick to Malekith's tummy in phase two, you're pretty safe. Until he starts jumping. After whiffing a dodge, I thought the DOT was just gonna kill us and kind of gave up, but we would have been fine as long as we didn't get hit by the second one. Bummer. The Omega Laser only works in the first fight, by the way, since he's monologuing in the first fight. Future fights, he's gonna charge in and beat your scrawny wizard ass. Next time, we lead with rocks. So does he. And we must get headshot here. Headshots do more damage, and we're pretty far away from the rock shotgun. More proof of this in the next fight. After we head in with the slicer, he slices us with the dagger, and we live that. It should do more than the rock shotgun. It's supposed to be just like a quick little spammy thing. We throw rocks from the back, and yeah, here's the confirmation that the rock shotgun is fine for us to take. One of them must have just hit us in the head. Roll into the claw and get hit again to reconfirm that it was a headshot that mattered, and we finally make it to phase two. Bait that big AoE jump attack then slice. His melee attacks are really bad. Stick to the crotch and keep chopping. The jump is a little worse to dodge. You have to double roll. Same for the spin attack. But the best strategy for phase two is just to avoid getting hit. If you hit him and he doesn't hit you, you win. Big brain move. Warped back to the capital and have to fight Gideon. I started blasting. Bam! That's all it takes. Just shoot the laser once and he dies. Godfrey is going to be a little less free. They should call him God Expensive or God Pricey or something. Rocks don't really work. As you cast, he dashes forward and stomps. If his foot hits us at the same time as the rocks, it breaks the ritual shield and we die. That happens a lot. You might notice during that first fight, I forgot to put the meteorite staff in the left hand. That's my bad. It doesn't help a whole lot. It does go a little bit better with the slicer. We're able to get him to phase 1.5, then get hit with the axe for our greed. I think we need to take a short detour. And by that, I mean a really long detour. First step, carry a manor. Gotta go do that Ronnie quest if we're gonna get some assistants that don't need to be leveled up with Grave Glovewort. Loretta is pretty free. We start with Azur, it gets about halfway down, and then just run in and finish her with the slice. Ronnie wants us to go kill her brother. Uh, wait, wait, wait. We didn't kill Radon yet? Whoops. Okay, summon everyone, not because we need their damage. I just want a distraction so we can throw rocks without being interrupted. It's a big brain move. And when we get our rocks off, it does big damage because Radon is a gravity type enemy. Google getting your rocks off on Radon on your work computer to find out more. Roll through that big gravity suck and stance break in before the slam that might have killed us. Never punished. So close to skipping phase two entirely, but he manages to jump. Just one more round of rocks and we get it. I accidentally die in Radon's hole. I guess it's a bit bigger than I thought. The mimic dies almost as fast. It has our vigor and we have the uber slicer. Never stood a chance. I grab the dagger for Ronnie, then we start another side quest. Pumpkinhead is blocking Selen. It barely takes three slicer shots. We can impress Selen with Commodore's herb, then she gives us the keys to find her own teacher. I fell down on the way there. This guy looks like he's sick as hell, but he gives us stars of ruin. I guess that's why they call him Professor Azur. Millicent also looks sick. Maybe we'll cure her later, but eh, probably not. We're doing enough side quests. Check back in with Selen, then back to our previously scheduled other side quest. Here's where I realize we messed up, gang. Nefeli dies after you burn down the Erdtree, and Gideon dies after you shove a 100 million megawatt laser through his head. So, the only person we can give the Salvus potion to is the Dung Eater, but 
but that would take a long time. I don't want to do it. Fudge it. That means no magic scorpion, but honestly, other talismans are fine. It'll be 12% more magic damage, but we'd take more damage. And I like the ritual shield, ritual sword, radigan icon, and dragon crest shield at plus two. Let's just deal plenty of damage and usually live at least one hit. Our damage isn't really the issue here anyway. I thought about going for the wind boy. We fell down a hole, so never mind. Let's just go get Tucci. That's another side quest, baby. We grab the flame cleanse me to heal up when we go through the poo poo swamp. The Ronnie fit will, I don't know, it'll make us look like Ronnie. The hat will also boost frosty sorceries, but it is in character. Both Ronnie and Sheldon are classic pranksters. Remember the night of the black knives? classic Bazinga moment. The Ronnie doll talks to us a little bit, shocking that we found a real doll in the incel river main. Then an ant sniper, phalanx demons holes, and an ant dashing kills us? The ants can dash? Wild. Anyway, that's Nokron done. The Baleful Shadow Fight lets us show off some of our classic caster gameplay. As she stands up, we throw rocks. Then we throw rocks again. She starts to heal, so we can throw rocks. Then more rocks. Ronnie says it was beautifully fought, but uh, are you sure about that? Are you positive that that was beautifully fought? We put on our highest immunity gear for the Lake of Rot, but it really doesn't matter. What we needed was Flame Cleanse Me, and thanks to the Two Fingers Talisman, we can actually use it. Woohoo! We beat the Poop Lake. Estelle is probably just gonna kill us as soon as they hit us. The first laser is weirdly forgiving to dodge. It looks intense, but you can roll way too early and still be fun. I don't love the tail, but we get under it and start throwing rocks at its face. Okay, so what's the deal with this dive attack that always whiffs? Is it supposed to scare you into running back and getting hit? Not sure. We throw the rocks anyway. The teleport grab just didn't magnet hands us like it did in the broken stuff run. That's really nice. Roll through another laser, then another dive. Why, dude? What's the goal there? Big shockwaves are annoying when I'm playing a weapon fighter, but we have a ranged attack here, so it's fine. We can run away and throw more rocks. Sands break after another dive that always misses, and then they bring out the meteors. <laughs> I knew that. It's another attack that's just kind of easy to avoid. Every time I've just spammed rolling, I haven't gotten hit. So just roll, baby. Then some more rocks. That's Hitless Estelle. Forgot to grab the Renala Grace, so we have to run forward and grab it, along with the wedding ring for Ronnie to make it to the Moonlight Altar. Moonlight Altar? I hardly know her. I died. I deserved that. But also, we've been on a detour for over an hour at this point, and I was just kind of annoyed. Anyway, here's a big long thing for a spell we need. Chelona's Rise. I threw rocks at a turtle, jump, bump a turtle, and throw rocks at a turtle. It takes eight minutes, but we get Ronnie's Dank Moon, which lowers magic damage resistance of your enemies and does a ton of frostbite and a little bit of damage on its own. It's a bit slow, but hey, less talk, more rock. Here's how it goes against Delecto. Since it's an Ever Jail boss, we can put down a magic a map before throwing out our moon. It hits, but she is really, really aggressive and really fast, so the rocks don't really work and the slicer would make us get close to her. I don't want to get close to her. I want to be very far away. We died twice. Weirdly, the solution seems to be trading damage with the moons. She can be frostbin, which makes her take even more damage, but yeah, she runs faster than us too. It's really, really fun to run away from her, especially when you need to heal or drink blue juice. We got so close to dying, but managed to get one last moon out there and unlock black knife tai chi ashes. Apparently we didn't have the ghost glove wart nine for her just yet, but a quick dip into Nokron will get us there. And all our setup is done. Time to end this. Believe it or not, trying to fight Godfrey with the best spirit ash in the game makes it easier. Hey, who could have guessed? It also lets us throw out a moon and a Terra Magica right at the beginning to get into phase 1.5. Tip Cheese is really going ham in there, and that lets us get rocks out to hit phase 2. We do get to phase 2.5, but get caught in the earthquake because the hit's done from the extra shockwave on the first jump stuns us. Bummer. Okay, let's try leading with two moons. I bet we have time. Yeah, I've got time. Then slice while he goes for 1.5 and we die in phase two. And again, with the daddy grabbing, where he just straight up rips us in half. Oh my god, I got grabbed again and quit out. First rule of Elden Ring, uh, don't get grabbed, but we'll add it to the death count. And then one more death, you know, just just why not? So let's fire all the moons. Infinite magic tier works for 20 seconds. Let's get 20 seconds out of it and just moon, 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 moon. Funnily enough, it even lets you float above the shockwave, so it's almost a defensive boost. In phase two, he just can't stop looking at us and ignores the tick. She's your tight dude. She's tall. She uses holy damage and kills people. Oh, is it because she helped kill your son? Yeah, that's probably why. Well, like father, like son. Thanks, Tish. R.I.P. Godfrey. Remember when I promised we did our last side quest? I lied. 
We didn't finish selling stuff. So we gotta go to the Weeping Peninsula, rip her heart out while the marionette just sorta watches respectfully in the background. Thanks, man. Jiren wants to kill Selen. He hangs out with her corpse. We bring her soul into a puppet, then meet up with all of them at the Raya Lucaria Academy. We have to choose who to kill. Someone who will give us a rock, or someone who will give us the best spell to kill God. Not much of a choice, actually. Launch all the moons at Jiren. He hides behind the books or something, I guess, but whatever. I just keep spamming moons. Let's get another spell that will make the Elden Beast a fair fight. After the Carrion Knight's sword, we get just in case we run out of blue flasks. Spoilers, we don't run out of blue flasks. Kill the crab and do the Burger King run through Raya Lucaria. So many Burger Kings to avoid. We are looking for Thops's keys. He left them somewhere. Oh, on top of the chandelier, of course. That's where I always lose my keys. But I'm six foot three, so you shorties probably can't relate. After returning the keys to him, he gets back to his dorm room and dies. Bummer. But we have Thops' barrier. A spell that, according to the comments, will invalidate Elden Stars. I guess it's finally time to test it. Last thing we need is a great rune. I thought Radon's would be the best, giving us 15% more magic health and stamina, but after doing the math, I realized plus five to vigor, mind, and endurance would actually give us more. So we go for Godric's great rune. I got hit by every ballista on the way and then killed some giants. Boom, there's our great rune. Time to fight God. We bring in Tachi Station and then run. Let her take the aggro while we throw a moon. Then some rocks and he parries her, but does not care that he parried her. He's coming for us anyway. Solution? Show him our ass. Moon him. While he tries to grab our summon, we throw more rocks. What a dork. You can't grab her. She's covered in oil. Then the hammer slammer. We can dodge the first two hits and tank the third. Weirdly enough, the rotting set has big elemental resistances, so we can actually live through some of this holy damage. And then just finish it off with the carrion slicer. We run around to the beast's booty and launch our moon. And I forgot we had the spiral, so I just used the slicer. Glad we took all the time to get it. Thankfully, the Elden Beast also wants to use its sword attacks that aren't as deadly as its other attacks. Pretty great. So is Chi Chi's Blade Beam, which takes away 10% of the Elden Beast's max HP and ticks some away. By the time it goes for the first Elden Ring, it's at 30% HP. Wait, 40. The Blade Beam debuff wore off. Elden Star's time, but I have been assured that Thop's Barrier is 100% effective at shutting down the Elden Stars. You really think someone would do that? Just go on the internet and tell lies? Okay, so that one was actually my fault. I thought you were supposed to tap the spell over and over again. You're supposed to hold it down. We'll do better next time. After getting killed by Radagon one more time, uh, of course. Next time, we send in two moons against Radagon and get that Frostbite to pop. That'll also make Taiki do more damage. It makes that phase go so nice and so fast. Back to the Elden Beast, and I remembered to use the Shard Spiral. It's so much better. It's a little better. It's fine. Personally, I like the Slicer better. It's so good that it's even better at the things that specifically spells are supposed to be good for. Now I'm really glad we took the time to get Shard Spiral. Okay, Elden Stars again, and we use Thops right, holding the button down to keep that barrier up. It uses stamina though. We have 10, or I guess 15 endurance. So it wears out before Elden Stars is done. We died. Everyone who said, oh, for the new Vigor ones, you should get Thops's barrier. It invalidates Elden Stars. Yes, I nope. am. Wrong. What? If you're gonna tell me what to do, you could at least try and be right. So, not really sure what we're gonna do. Die to Radagon? I guess it could work. Let's just try it six times. Hell, one time, we got headshot with a hammer. Ow. As I pop our last rune arc, I remember how many times we've clutched it out at the last second. How many times has the last run been the one? How many times has the pressure of finality pushed us forward into greatness? How many times have we watched Radagon switch his target of the dive attack at the last frame so we dodge in correctly and die. Lots, actually. It's fine. We can just buy three more rune arcs and die again. Anyway, two more, I guess. This one goes pretty good. Opening it up, we make him take the moon, now you take the moon, now you take the moon, now you take the moon. To get the frostbite pop, Tish gets a blade beam in there somewhere. All the debuffs are stacking to Shrek this dude down. When he goes for the hammer slammer, I decide, you know what? I don't like that move. Let's just kill him. If you don't like a boss's attack, kill them before they can use it. Elden Beast gets that dank moon debuff and then the slicer. I really do just like it better than the spiral. We could boost the spiral with the Godfrey icon, but we could also boost slicer with the Millicent prosthesis, the winged sword insignia, and the thorny tier. So I don't know, like we could even boost it more. It's fine, slice away 
after it comes back from the ring attack. Then avoid the melee attacks and slice, slice, slice. Big dive that's easy to dodge so we can fire off another moon. It's meleeing Tish, so we slice it up while it boots up Elden Stars. And you know what? I don't like that move. Let's just kill him. If you don't like a boss's attack, kill them before they can use it. We beat the game with only intelligence at 6 hours and 11 minutes, with 26 bosses dead and 64 deaths. That's gonna put it in D tier, above the breaking weapons run and a bit below Obi-Wan, which makes sense, that was a carry and slicer run that had vigor. And sure, I have over a year's more of experience under my belt than when we did that. Look, I just, I don't like spells. I don't think they're fun. Some of them can hang out. Carry and slicer is good, it's basically just a weapon. Rock sling is good, Commodusur is fine sometimes, but I really just, I prefer a good old-fashioned weapon. Let's use a weapon next week. To watch these runs live, follow me on Twitch. We find new ways to play Elden Ring all the time. Join the Patreon if you want to give me money. It's the best place to do that. And make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next video.